Did you know that most Capricorn serial killers, who are either the most infamous, the most prolific, or the youngest born, worked in the medical field? Just consider Harold Shipman and Lucy Ladby to name a few. Keep watching to learn more shocking details about Capricorn serial killers. On this channel, we are looking at serial killers from the astrological point of view. We are combining astrology and criminal profiling to try to understand what natal charts can tell us about these offenders. We will be creating astrological criminal profiles to try to find similarities and differences in the astrological makeup of these killers to better understand criminal behavior in general. In order for someone to be classified as a serial killer, they must have killed at least three victims on separate occasions, which may be days, weeks, months, or even years apart. Some killers on our list have less than three confirmed victims, but more than three suspected victims, and they will also be included. Our lists include serial killers from around the globe who were born in the 19th and 20th centuries and whose date of birth data is available. While we are focusing on finding what made them take from the astrological point of view, we must never forget their victims, victim families pain, and the general death and destruction they have left behind. Before we start the investigation, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, turn on that notification bell so you never miss out on new videos. Did you know that there are 93 Capricorn serial killers? Now prepare yourself for the shocker. There are a whopping 13 female serial killers. This is by far the highest number of female serial killers of any of the previous signs, three more than Virgo that was holding the record for the highest number of serial killers up till now. It's also interesting that only one female Capricorn serial killer was born in the 19th century, while the rest, that is 12 killers, were born in the 20th century, including two of the most infamous Capricorn serial killers, Dorothea Puente and Juana Barasa. On the other hand, out of the 80 male Capricorn serial killers, five were born in the 19th and 75 in the 20th century. We often assume that, because of the sheer number of serial killers born in the 20th century, that people in 19th century were somehow less violent or that there were no serial killers in previous centuries. This, of course, is not the case. The reason why we are seeing a drastically increased number of serial killers in the 20th century is because forensic and investigative methods got progressively better better at catching the offenders. On the other hand, we should also have in mind that back then some behavior that we would consider violent now wasn't deemed as such, such as child labor, so our perception of what a criminal behavior is and the perception of our ancestors don't necessarily match. To better understand criminal behavior, I've assembled an international list of Capricorn serial killers, ensuring our examination remains unaffected by cultural, racial, or religious variables. These Capricorn offenders come from various regions around the globe, that is, they're from Australia, Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Chile, China, the Czech Republic, Estonia, France, Germany, Hungary, Indonesia, Japan, Mexico, Netherlands, Russia, Slovakia, South Africa, South Korea, Spain, Switzerland, UK, and the USA. The most prolific female Capricorn serial killer is also one of the most infamous. It's Juana Barasa from Mexico, aka La Mata Viejitas, or Granny Killer. She was born on December 27, 1957. Her father left them when Juana was born, which probably created resentment and hatred in her mother, Justa, who constantly berated her. Justa was a violent alcoholic who even literally sold her own daughter for three beers to a guy when Juana was only 12. Juana got pregnant as a result of this. Later, as an adult, Juana would go on to have six more children. When her partner disappeared, probably because of the connection with the drug dealing business, Juana started selling popcorn near the wrestling center. Because she was strong, she took interest in wrestling, even buying a pink wrestling suit and getting a ring name of La Dama del Silencio or the Lady of Silence. However, there are contrary statements, with some saying that she was a professional wrestler, while others state that she was only a big fan and the promoter of wrestling. 
Anyway, after some time, Juana returned to selling popcorn. Money was scarce, and when her son got killed in a street fight when he was only 24, she started robbing elderly people by using a toy gun to scare them into giving her their valuables. It worked for a while, but her rage grew, and after learning about government's plan to help the elderly, she realized it was a great way for her to gain access to their homes. She would gain trust of her victims by posing as a government official offering them a chance to sign up for welfare programs. She would strangle them to death using various objects such as ropes and stockings and even a stethoscope or stab them with sharp objects. She would then rob their houses and sell their valuables. However, her motives were not purely those of criminal enterprise. She associated her elderly victims with her abusive mother and believed she was doing society a favor by killing them. Juana Barasa was arrested in 2006 and was sentenced to 759 years in prison. She killed between 42 and 48 elderly women. The second most prolific female Capricorn killer is Christine Malèvre from France, who was born on January 10, 1970. Christine was a nurse who is suspected of killing as many as 30 patients. She was caring for terminally ill patients. Her patients were three to four times more likely to die while she was on duty. Malèvre initially admitted to assisting in the deaths of 30 terminally ill patients, but later recanted her confession, saying that she was coerced. During the trial, she confessed to killing four patients by injecting them with lethal doses of morphine, potassium, or other drugs, but she said it was only because they requested it from her. Her defense was that she only engaged in assisted suicide. Christine Malèvre even wrote in her book, I helped people to end their suffering and depart in peace. I did not kill. I'm not a criminal. This puts her in the category of mercy medical killers. She reportedly had a morbid fascination with death and disease. She was sentenced to only 10 years for killing six of the seven patients she was accused of killing. She is also permanently banned from working as a nurse. The most prolific male Capricorn serial killer is Niels Högel, who we mentioned briefly in the video about Virgo serial killers. Högel was born on December 30, 1976, in Germany. He was a nurse who killed at least 85, but possibly 300 patients, which would make him the most prolific killer in German's peaceful history. Reportedly, Högel had a normal childhood, unlike most serial killers. As it happens with medical killers, hospitals he worked at recorded an unusual spike in resuscitations and deaths during his shifts. Interestingly, when he took a medical leave himself, the number of medical emergencies dropped drastically. He was held in high regard by his colleagues and even the director of nursing praised him in her recommendation letter, saying that he had circumspect, diligent and autonomous work ethic and that he acted prudently and in an objectively correct manner in critical situations. Unlike Christine Malèvre, Niels Högel seemed to fit into another medical serial killer category hero killer. The difference between these two categories is this. Hero killers kill and put patients in danger by creating medical crises where they would appear as heroes who saved the day. Mercy killers, on the other hand, kill to relieve patients from suffering. That's what they say, at least. While both types have a higher percentage of deaths on their shifts, hero killers are often seen by others as dealing exceptionally well during emergencies, rushing to save the day. Niels Högel was arrested in 2005 after some colleagues caught him intentionally manipulating a patient's syringe pump to improperly administer a drug. In 2019, forensic psychiatrists described him as having a combined personality disorder, that is, narcissistic personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder, and compulsive disorder. He was sentenced to life imprisonment. The second most prolific male Capricorn serial killer is Wang Chang from China, who was born on January 16, 1975. He is regarded as one of the worst serial killers and rapists in China's history. As with most serial killers, Wang Chang had a traumatic childhood. His father was an abusive alcoholic and his mother left them when he was only five. At 10, he was sent to live with his grandparents, who, when he was 13, sent him to school to get proper education, something his father deprived him of. Other kids started bullying him because they learned that his father was a drunk and a gambler, and on top of that, he was in prison at that time. 
Wang Chang decided to drop out of school because of bullying. His grandparents weren't pleased and would regularly meet him with harsh words, even telling him something to the extent other people commit suicide, why don't you? At 15, Wang Chang decided to move out and start living on his own. To support himself, he became a robber. He was caught and spent four years in prison. During that time, he wrote letters to his mother but never got a reply. One day, after being released from prison, he saw a couple kissing. He attacked them, robbed them, and assaulted the girl. He later said that he didn't have any intention of killing them, up until the point when the boyfriend started begging him for his life, saying that he still had parents who loved him. This stirred something in Wang Chang and he stabbed him multiple times. This marked the beginning of his serial killer career, where he killed at least 45 people, which gave him the nickname number 45 super killer. He engaged in assault and sometimes even necrophilia. He said that his routine was going to work, going out and killing someone, and then going back home to sleep. He claimed that he became so proficient at killing that it took him only 20 minutes to do it. He was tipped off by a friend who helped him in various robberies. After a short trial, Wang Chang was sentenced to death and executed in 2005. The youngest born Capricorn serial killer is also one that has been recently discovered. Her crimes sent shock waves throughout the UK. It's Lucy Ledby who was born on January the 4th, 1990. Latby was a nurse who worked in the neonatal unit of Countess of Chester Hospital. She killed seven infants and attempted to murder six more, many of whom were left with permanent brain damage. She would inject infants with air or insulin, overfeed them, and physically abuse them with medical tools. She even falsified patient records to avert suspicion. As in the case of other medical killers, Latby's colleagues gradually started observing that most deaths occurred on Latby's shifts. She was reported to the hospital's executive team, however, despite the common denominator in all the sudden collapses and deaths being Lucy Latby, they concluded it was coincidental and no substantial actions were undertaken. In June 2016, after the death of two of triplets, the lead neonatologist demanded that Latby be removed from the unit. The duty executive took Lucy's side, insisting that she was safe to work and that she was happy to take responsibility if anything happened to the babies under Lucy's care. She was moved to a desk job and, unsurprisingly, the suspicious collapses stopped. Lucy Ledby was arrested in July 2018. In July of this year, 2023, Lucy Ledby was found guilty and was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Ledby is the most prolific nurse serial killer of children in British history history, surpassing Beverly Allett. The second youngest-born Capricorn killer is Alexander Rubel, a Ukrainian-born Estonian serial killer who was born on December 25, 1980. Before killing his victims, Rubel would huff gasoline. He chose his first victim, a disabled neighbor, because he knew he would be an easy target. He would usually stab or strangle his victims and even decapitated one. He killed between six and more than seven people. Because he was a minor when he committed the crimes, he got only eight years and was released in 2006. No one knows for sure what has happened to him after the release, with some speculating that he moved to Ukraine, while some believe that he stayed in Estonia with a changed name. The most infamous Capricorn serial killers are Ian Brady, a.k.a. The Moors Murders, Harold Shipman, a.k.a. Dr. Death, Juana Barasa, a.k.a. La Mata Viejitas, and Dorothea Puente, a.k.a. Death House Landlady. Some may ask why I haven't listed Harold Shipman as one of the most prolific male Capricorn serial killers, as he certainly did kill a lot of people, but because his lowest victim number is 15, and I also wanted to diversify a bit, I decided to present his case in this section of this video. Since we've already mentioned Juana Barasa, I won't be mentioning her in this part. Ian Brady, aka The Moors Murders, was born on January 2, 1938, in the UK. As with most serial killers, Brady reportedly tortured and killed animals as a child and even set them on fire. As a teen, he was apprehended various times and even spent two years in a youth detention center. In 1959, he got a clerical job at Milliwards Merchandising, where he would meet Myra Hindley in 1969. Ian Brady was described by his co-workers as quiet and punctual, but short-tempered. Brady got obsessed with Nazi atrocities, reading Mein Kampf, and even learning German because of it. Ian Brady and Myra Hindley tortured and killed five children, all between the ages of 10 and 17. At least four of them were assaulted. 
Myra Hindley would gain trust of children, lure them, and take them to Ian. Brady wanted to commit perfect murder. After torturing and killing innocent children, they would bury them in the moors, hence the name the Moor Murders. And Ian would take pictures of Myra at the graves. He was sentenced to life imprisonment. Ian Brady was diagnosed as a psychopath in 1985. He died in 2017. Harold Shipman, a.k.a. Dr. Death, was born on January 14, 1946, in the UK. He was a general practitioner and probably one of the most prolific serial killers in history, with estimated 250 victims. As we've said, it takes much longer to detect medical serial killers because they operate in an environment where death is not uncommon. These types of killers usually take care of the most vulnerable population – infants, children, elderly, and terminally ill patients. Harold Shipman's victims were the elderly, and he would be considered mercy killer who wanted to give his patients unwanted, peaceful, and dignified death. Reportedly, Shipman was very close to his mother, who died of lung cancer when he was 17. This left a lasting scar on Harold's psyche, as he would later administer diamorphine or heroin to his victims, much like he saw doctors administer morphine to his mother in the later stages of her disease, which made her pain subside. He would usually kill his elderly patients in their home and made them look like they died peacefully in their sleep while sitting in their armchair or relaxing on the couch. Apart from the abnormally large amount of patients dying after Shipman's visit and the large number of cremation forms he had asked to have countersigned, what caught attention was that people don't normally die peacefully reclined in their armchairs. While some who are lucky do die in such a dignified way, many who die of natural causes such as old age are found in a variety of positions such as when they collapse on the floor and so on. The exact number of Shipman's victims is unknown and he was charged with the murder of only 15 victims. In 2000, he was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. He hanged himself in prison on January 13, 2004, one day shy of his 58th birthday. Dorothea Puente, a.k.a. the Death House landlady, was born on January 9, 1929 in the USA. She ran a boarding house in California and killed nine of her tenants so that she could cash in their state and federal checks, which put her motives into criminal enterprise category. Like most serial killers, Dorothea Puente already had a lengthy criminal history before she ventured into killing people. She was first arrested in 1960 for owning and operating a bookie keeping firm as a front of a brothel in Sacramento. After her divorce from her last husband, Roberto Jose Puente, she focused on running a boarding house for homeless people. She portrayed herself as a caring landlady. She would put on vintage clothing, wore large granny glasses, and stop dyeing her hair. She established herself as a genuine resource to the community to aid alcoholics, homeless people, and mentally ill people by holding Alcoholics Anonymous meetings and assisting individuals to sign up to receive social security benefits. She would usually slip something into her victim's drink or food, effectively poisoning them. Her crimes went unnoticed for some time because the victims belonged to the population that was known to have problems. Though the officials knew who went into Dorothea Puente's house, it wasn't unusual that some of them died due to various illnesses or that they'd just take off and disappear. She killed her first victim in 1982 and the last one in 1988. In 1993, Dorothea Puente was sentenced to life imprisonment without a possibility of parole. She died in 2011 at the age of 82 from natural causes. You've already become acquainted with some serial killers sharing the same birthday as some other serial killer despite having no connection to them and often even being from different countries. We call them astrological twins or astro twins. There are three sets of Capricorn astro twins. The first set of Capricorn astro twins consists of Gen Sekine from Japan and Yurai Luptak, aka the Strangler from Banska Bystrica from Slovakia who were born on January 2, 1940. Gen Sekine and his wife Hiroko Kazama, an Aquarius, were dog breeders and swindlers from Japan who killed at least four clients. Sekine was famous for breeding Alaskan Malmut and Siberian Huskies. He is known to have swindled customers by stealing dogs he had sold and selling them to other clients. Reportedly, he even poisoned the dog of one of his clients in order to sell him a new dog. Sekine would privately brag about committing a perfect murder and that if there was an Olympic event for killing, he would get the gold medal. 
Sekine followed a set of five rules which he called his murder philosophy. First, kill those who are not good for the world. Second, do not kill for insurance purposes, as you will get caught. Third, kill the greedy. Fourth, it is important not to shed blood. Fifth, the most important thing is to make the body disappear. Both Sakina and Kazama were sentenced to death, though Sakina died of multiple organ failure on death row prior to execution in 2017. Hiroko Kazama remains on death row. Yuri Luptak, aka the Strangler from Banska Bistrica, was a Slovak rapist and serial killer. He was brought up in an orphanage. When he was 17, he started drinking heavily, which led him to having problems with law, such as engaging in theft and such. He committed his first murder when he was 36. The body of Elena Damova was found a year later. Shortly after the murder, Luptak was arrested for tax crimes and was imprisoned for several years. After being released from prison in 1982, he continued assaulting and killing women. The autopsy of the second victim, 15-year-old Lydia Rilova, showed that she was buried alive, but Lupta claimed that she was most certainly dead when he buried her. Yurei Lupta killed a total of three women. He was sentenced to death and was hanged in Bratislava in 1987. The second set of Astro Twins consists of Donald Jean Miller, aka the East Lansing serial killer from USA, and Tony Abels, also from USA, who were born on December 28, 1954. Donald Jean Miller, aka the East Lansing serial killer, grew up in a loving middle-class family, unlike most serial killers. While in high school, Miller met a girl named Martha Sue Young and the two fell in love. In late 1976, Donald proposed to Martha and she accepted. However, shortly after, she broke off their engagement and their relationship, which enraged Miller so much that he assaulted and killed her, making her his first victim. They sent him on a path of a serial killer. Miller went on to kill three more women. At first, he was convicted to only 15 years in prison with the possibility of parole after 10 years. This is due to mostly circumstantial evidence. After the discovery of the shoelaces that could have been used as a murder weapon, Miller was sentenced to additional 40 years with the possibility of parole after 20 years. If he serves out his sentence in full, his projected release date is on March 24th, 2031. Tony Abels committed his first murder when he was only 15 when he killed a man during a robbery. He was sentenced to life imprisonment a year later, but after serving 12 years, he got paroled in 1983 and got a job as a construction worker. Five months after his release, he broke into an apartment of an 83-year-old lady. He suffocated her with a pillow and then robbed the apartment. On Valentine's Day in 1987, Abels killed his girlfriend. Despite being her boyfriend and having a criminal history, Tony Abels wasn't arrested as a suspect at that time. In 1990, he got drunk and killed his new girlfriend after an argument. This time, police arrested Abels on the spot. While it is known that he killed four people, there is a strong possibility that he was involved in other killings as well. He was first sentenced to death in the electric chair, but two years later, his sentence was commuted to life imprisonment. The last set of Astro Twins consists of Erasmo Moena, aka the psychopath of Placilla from Chile, and Christine Malèvre from France, who were born on January 10, 1970. Since we've already talked about Christine Malèvre's case, I won't be mentioning her in this part. Erasmo Moena, aka the psychopath of Placilla, El Psicopata de Placilla, is a murderer and a suspected serial killer from Chile. According to his mother, he never suffered any abuse while growing up, though she said that he performed poorly at school. He was treated as an outcast by his peers due to his macho and hypersexual attitude. Moena once threw himself out of the moving bus and hit his head against the pavement as part of a game played by him and his friends. During his school years, he was found guilty of several robberies and was expelled. When he was 20, Erasmo Moena committed his first serious robbery. He then became friends with a 27-year-old hairdresser, Marco Antonio Cortes, who moved in with him. Some say that the two were in an intimate relationship, but Moena has denied those claims. On August 27, 1991, Moena murdered Cortes and dismembered his body together with a group of friends, setting it on fire and threw the remains into the Itata River. He later admitted to the crime to 
single partner who turned him in to the police, but because the body was never found, he was acquitted of all charges. In 2007, he raped a woman in Mulchen. He was sentenced to three years in prison, and when he was released in 2010, he assaulted a 10-year-old at the bus terminal. The same year, Erasmo Moena killed a 36-year-old woman who answered his newspaper ad. Six hours after killing her, he was contacted by this woman's friends, who demanded to know where she was. Moena lured her into a forest and killed her. He was sentenced to 61 years and 176 days imprisonment. As you can see, evil is not restricted to only one culture, one country, or one part of the world. There is evil in every country and every culture, and here we are trying to analyze it so that we can detect it and prevent it in the future. Now let's dive into astrological profiling. Out of the 93 Capricorn serial killers, and you can find the full list in the description box, we'll focus on the planetary positions of the ones mentioned today. In this video, we'll be focusing on the Sun, Moon and personal planets, Mercury, Venus and Mars. The rest of the planetary positions, including asteroids like Chiron, will step into the spotlight when we explore major aspects later. Since ascendant data is a rarity, it won't be included, which also means we won't be looking at the houses. Let's start with Moon, a planet that reigns over our emotions, intuition, instincts, and emotional responses. Some astrologers even argue it's more important than the Sun in influencing our daily lives. Quick note, the Moon changes sign roughly every two and a half days. Since we lack precise birth times for most serial killers, there might be instances where their Moon sign falls in one of two neighboring signs. Further analysis in subsequent videos will give us a better understanding of which of the two Moon signs is more likely to be correct than the other based on the characteristics of the crimes committed. Most Capricorn serial killers have Moon in Aquarius and Pisces, eight each. Moon in Aquarius is intellectual and a bit funky. They like everything that is odd and pride themselves for being unique. Moon in Aquarius is on the same axis as Leo Moon, after all, meaning that the core energies are similar, but they are displayed in opposite ways. Moon in Aquarius is independent and aloof. They are not very emotional, though they may appear to understand emotions because they are usually friendly. A Capricorn Sun Aquarius Moon is someone who appears laid back but have a calculating mind. However, they're also eccentric, which can, in the long run, make them sloppy. Dong Jean Miller and Tony Abels have Moon in Aquarius. Moon in Pisces natives are the embodiment of sensitivity and of emotions running deep. The romantic, which mellows down Capricorn's coldness. However, even though these two signs form a sextile, these natives are not necessarily balanced. There is no inner tension commonly observed in squares and oppositions, but because Capricorn and Pisces are quite a bit different, a native may switch back and forth between being calculated and ruthless and emotional and caring. Alternatively, they may use this to their advantage to get to their unsuspecting victims. Juana Barasa and Wang Chang have this moon. Seven Capricorn Sun serial killers have moon in Cancer. Sun in Capricorn and moon in Cancer form an opposition which automatically creates inner tension within the native regardless of the signs in question. Opposition is directed more inwardly while square is directed outwardly and the native with an opposition between their sun and their moon will feel the tension and the aggression but that may not be obvious to others as in the case of squares. Capricorn Sun Cancer Moon natives can't reconcile the two sides of themselves, the rational, emotionless character and the very emotional and intuitive personality. Gen Sekine and Yurai Luptak have their moon in Cancer. Six Capricorn Sun serial killers also have their moon in Capricorn. This amplifies the traits of a Capricorn. When Sun and Moon are in the same signs, it is often said that that person is a double, in this case a double Capricorn. This native is someone who struggles with expressing emotions. They prefer hard, cold facts to dealing with feelings. They like to plan things out. It makes them feel safe. They may give off the aura of mystery because they definitely don't wear their hearts on their sleeve. They think they're very intelligent and that they can outsmart everyone by carefully planning out their crimes. They like order and discipline. Out of the mentioned serial killers in this video, Ian Brady has his moon in Capricorn. There are five 
having Libra Moon killers, Libra Moon wants tranquility, but they often unwittingly create chaos. Capricorn Sun and Libra Moon create a square which creates that constant push and pull within the native that doesn't go away. They're constantly torn between wanting to control and dominate a situation and appease everyone. In fact, Capricorn Sun probably doesn't like their own moon in Libra. It interferes with their plans and the orderly way of life. No killers mentioned in this video have moon in Libra. Next, there are four Gemini and four Virgo moon killers. Gemini moon is friendly and talkative. They like to mingle and socialize. They're very intelligent and adaptable. They're great multitaskers and this can come in handy to an organized Capricorn Sun. Capricorn Sun Gemini moon is someone who is charming and pleasant to be around. They have an aura of being responsible because of the sternness of the Capricorn. Capricorn and Gemini can play off well one another and create a trust in their potential victims. Alternatively, these natives can be a total mess erratic and even unhinged. This is because Capricorn and Gemini form an in conjunction that is an aspect between two signs that have nothing in common. Harold Shipman has his moon in Gemini. Virgo moon forms a trine with Capricorn sun, so the character and the personality of the native are seamlessly integrated. While there is no inner tension created by the hard aspects, it doesn't go without its challenges, mainly the nervousness of Virgo and constant criticism. In fact, with Capricorn sun, Virgo moon, criticism is more pronounced, though the nervousness might be somewhat harnessed by the Capricorn sun. No killers mentioned have moon Capricorn. Next, there are three Scorpio and three Taurus moon killers. Scorpio alongside Capricorn is one of the two difficult moon positions. Scorpio moon is intense, dark and brooding. They're also paranoid and have a seething anger inside. Generally speaking, Scorpio moon is good at controlling themselves and Capricorn sun can help greatly. However, when this energy comes out, it's one of the most destructive ones out there. No killers mentioned have moon in Scorpio. Moon in Taurus is self-serving and hedonistic. They're primarily preoccupied with their own well-being. They're also resistant to change, especially emotional change, which makes them reluctant to adapt to new situations. Capricorn Sun is also pretty set in their views and habits, and this is a person who will stick to their routines, even to their own detriment, though they probably won't be aware of it. No killers mentioned have this moon. Next, there are two Aries and two Leo moon killers. Aries moon forms a square with Capricorn sun. These natives personality and character, their wants and needs clash a lot. This is someone who is organized and methodical, but whose emotions run high. They're prone to emotional highs and lows, and they're also impulsive and impatient. They don't usually think before they act, which is in stark contrast to how a Capricorn wants to live their lives. This creates inner tension that's different difficult to resolve and control. Lucy Ladby has her moon in Aries. Moon in Leo is enthusiastic and energetic. They have strong drive and want to succeed in life. Capricorn Sun, Moon in Leo, is ambitious and wants to be recognized as the best. They don't mind working hard to achieve their goals. They demand respect and when they feel they're being disrespected in any way, they can become very dangerous. Alexander Rubel has his moon in Leo. Finally, there is only one Sagittarius moon. This moon is fun-loving and easygoing. They have a pleasant disposition and are usually energetic and fun to be around. Sagittarius moon can blend well with Capricorn sun, however strange that may sound. It mellows down Capricorn's sternness and makes them look more approachable. This can be especially advantageous for serial killers who hide in plain sight. Dorothea Puente has her moon in Sagittarius. As you noticed, I haven't listed all the moon signs because some killers were born on the days when moon changed from one sign to another and those will be listed separately. There are seven Aries Taurus, six Taurus Gemini, five Aquarius Pisces, four Gemini Cancer, four Virgo Libra and three Pisces Aries. Niels Hergel has his moon in either Aries or Taurus and Erasmo Moena and Christine Malèvre have their moon in either Aquarius or Pisces. There are also two Cancer Leo, two Capricorn Aquarius, two Leo Virgo, two Libra Scorpio, two Scorpio Sagittarius, and one Sagittarius Capricorn. No killers mentioned in this video were born on the days of any of these moon combinations. Further analysis of the individual cases and the comparison to the known moon signs will tell us which of the two signs is more likely to be correct. This might, of course, alter the existing statistics of serial killer moon signs, but in subsequent videos we'll see how much 
and in what direction. The next planet we're going to analyze is Mercury. Mercury is important to understand as it governs how we think and how we communicate with others. Mercury can only be in three signs, the sun sign of the native, one previous and one subsequent sign. In the case of Capricorn natives, it can be in Sagittarius, Capricorn and Aquarius. There are 59 Capricorn, 22 Sagittarius and 12 Aquarius Mercuries. Mercury in Capricorn is methodical and organized. They're ambitious and goal-oriented. They like to analyze situations and plan out their moves. They don't let emotions get the best of them. These natives are practical but also quite stubborn. They don't get easily swayed and have very strong opinions. They're notoriously judgmental of others while failing to see their own shortcomings. Majority of Capricorn Sun serial killers also have Mercury in Capricorn. Donald Miller, Tony Abels, Erasmo Moena, Christine Malèvre, Niels Hergel, Gien Sekine, Yurei Luptak, Ian Brady, Harold Shipman, and Lucy Ledby. Sagittarius Mercury is talkative but also opinionated. They're bigger than life and love to talk about big ideas. They usually get lost in details and may lack focus. They're adventurous both physically and mentally and like to entertain new ideas. However, they may be too stuck with their own ideas and opinions that it may fail to recognize other people's opinions as valid. Alexander Rubel has his Mercury in Sagittarius. Mercury in Aquarius is talkative and friendly, however, their communication style often has elements of forgetfulness. They remember only what they're interested in, and one may question if the native was listening to them at all, especially because they may repeatedly ask the same question even after being told the answer on multiple occasions. They may make people comfortable around them because they're good at putting people at ease. Because of their aloofness, they may give out the aura of wisdom. Juana Barasa, Wang Chang, and Dorothea Puente have this Mercury. The next planet we're going to analyze is Venus. It is a very important planet, especially for our study. Venus is the planet of beauty, aesthetics, charm, and above all, relationships. In a male chart, it indicates what kind of person the native finds attractive, while in the female chart, it tells how the woman flirts. In both male and female charts, Venus shows what we want out of a relationship and how we behave in a relationship. Since majority of the cases we're investigating are of psychosexual nature, the position of Venus is very important. This is especially true for male killers because their crimes are usually driven by sexual desires. Similar to Mercury, Venus can only be in five signs, the sun sign of the native, two previous and two subsequent signs. In the case of Capricorn native, Venus can be in Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces. There are 38 Aquarius, 20 Capricorn, 16 Sagittarius, 12 Scorpio and only 7 Pisces Venuses. Venus in Aquarius loves to be in a relationship. They thrive when being with someone. It makes them feel good about themselves. However, their partner needs to constantly keep them on their toes because they get easily bored. They want a unique and different relationship that others will envy. They're also very independent, so while they do want their ideal relationship, few actually come close to their ideals, which makes Venus in Aquarius get bored. They want excitement and novelty. Niels Hugel, Gian Sekine, Yure Luptak, Juana Barasa, Wang Chang and Lucy Ledby have Venus in Aquarius. Venus in Capricorn is seemingly cold and frigid. They're not known for overt displays of emotions and definitely don't like public displays of affection. They usually seem cool, calm and collected, but behind closed doors they can be quite the freaks. They see romance more as a contract between people. In love they're usually traditionalists. Erasmo Moena, Christine Malèvre, Ian Brady and Harold Shipman have Venus in Capricorn. Sagittarius Venus likes flirting and having good old fun. They're unbothered by the what-ifs in love and don't have an issue approaching who they're interested in. They're also flimsy and while they idolize love in relationships, most fall short compared to their expectations. They think they're reasonable though. Alexander Rubel has his Venus in Sagittarius. Venus in Scorpio is passionate and intense. They like taboo and they're not afraid of it. In fact, they love everything that is forbidden because it holds great appeal to them. They're also magnetic and have powerful personalities. They're not easily scared of anything a relationship may bring, but they have a tendency to be obsessive, possessive and jealous. Donald Miller and Tony Abels have Venus in Scorpio. 
Finally, Pisces Venus is romantic and dreamy. They crave a fairy tale romance. They may idolize their partner because they often fail to see faults in people they love. They're overly sensitive, which can often lead to manipulation. Dorothea Puente has her moon in Pisces. The last planet we'll be analyzing in this video is Mars. Mars is a very important planet, not just generally speaking, but for our astrological profiling. It deals with aggression, how we act and react to the world, the pain, and how we go about doing stuff. In a male's chart, it shows how he flirts. In the female's chart, it shows what kind of people she's attracted to. That isn't to say that when flirting, a man will not employ some of his Venus sign and a woman will not employ some of her Mars sign, as it happens often often, and these two planets, Venus and Mars, are the ones most closely looked at when dealing with romantic relationships. In both charts, it is also related to sexuality. Most Capricorn serial killers have Mars in Sagittarius, 15 of them. Mars in Sagittarius is active and restless. They don't have much patience, but they make up for it by being energetic and fun to be around. They have boundless energy that doesn't like to be stifled. They like to be surrounded by people, and they're not afraid even to pick up fights when necessary. Necessary. They're fiercely independent and hate when others want to impose their rules on them. Niels Hergel, Juana Barasa, Lucy Ladby, and Wang Chang have their Mars in Sagittarius. Next, there are 11 Pisces Mars killers. Pisces Mars is not very active. They don't like rules and prefer to go with the flow. This is in stark contrast with Capricorn Sun, despite these two forming a sextile. This Mars gives Capricorn Sun a seemingly relaxed attitude towards everything. However, this is exactly what may create a problem within the native, as Capricorn wants to control the situation and plan things out. These natives may have a confusing energy of being being orderly and in control and living in permanent haze. Don Miller, Tony Abels, Erasmo Moena, Christine Malevre, and Ian Brady have Mars in Pisces. There are 10 Capricorn, 10 Scorpio, and 10 Cancer Mars killers. Mars in Capricorn knows how to stand their ground. They can be stubborn, but they're also unyielding. They prefer the rational world to the world of emotions, and they truly work well in an environment where there are no unknowns. They're meticulous and detail-oriented, and don't like like to let anything to chance. They probably don't even believe in chance. Alexander Rubel has his Mars in Capricorn. Mars in Scorpio is a powerful placement. These natives are intense. Because Scorpio is a fixed sign, when they commit to something or someone, they usually commit for life. This is why they don't take well any type of betrayal and often resort to vengeance. This placement is both very destructive and self-destructive. Their obsession often leads to their own demise, and even though they may be aware of it, they're unable to let go. No killers mentioned in this video have this Mars. Mars in Cancer is a difficult position. The aggressive and assertive Mars is in the sign of the sensitive, shy, and emotional Cancer. While both males and females have it hard with Mars in Cancer, it hits men harder than women because men are traditionally expected to take on a more assertive role. This is why Mars in Cancer natives are notoriously passive-aggressive. Now add to that that Capricorn Sun forms a square with this Mars, and it just adds to the pressure the external pressure created by society and internal pressure of a Capricorn Sun that doesn't feel comfortable with the lack of emotional control of their own Mars in Cancer. Harold Shipman has his Mars in Cancer. Next on the list, we have Mars in Aquarius, nine of them. Mars in Aquarius is visionary, but also erratic. They want to achieve something grand that would be to the benefit of society, but when they don't, they can become bitter. They like to be seen as eccentric. This native is someone who is full of surprises, because while they may appear to be traditional because of their Capricorn character, they may often switch between their more traditional side and their totally eccentric side. No killers mentioned have this Mars. There are six Gemini, six Virgo, and six Aries Mars killers. Mars in Gemini is talkative and likes to use their words as weapons. They know how powerful words are and know how to use them properly to get what they want, either by coercing someone to do what they want, manipulate others, or even taunt police and media with letters and phone calls. A Capricorn Sun may appear friendlier than they actually are, which is something a killer may use to their advantage. Dorothea Puente has her Mars in Gemini. Virgo Mars is a bit shy and reserved, but they're meticulous and analytical, which goes well with Capricorn. Sun. They also like to plan out things and definitely don't like to go with the flow. They can get super anxious if their plans don't go as planned, and this can even stop them in their tracks. However, because Virgo is a mutable sign, it's easier for them to adapt to a situation, so they will not be too stubborn about having their way. 
No killers mentioned have this Mars. Aries Mars is assertive and a true go-getter. When they want something, they want it now. They're not known for their patience. They can be very persistent as they don't understand why things wouldn't go the way they want and when they want. Usually when they want something, they want it now. We've already established that Capricorn and Aries form a square. This creates a tension within the native between their character and how they act and react. Capricorn Sun would want everything to be methodical, but their Aries Mars urges them to make fast decisions. Astro twins Gen Sekine and Yurei Luptak have their Mars in Aries. They're four Libra and four Taurus Mars killers. Libra Mars is indecisive. They like to weigh pros and cons to every situation, and oftentimes it takes a long time to do that in order to make an informed decision. While it suits Capricorn Sun to take things slowly, Libra Mars takes it to a whole other level. This trait can make them passive-aggressive. No killers mentioned have this Mars. Taurus Mars doesn't like to make much fuss about anything unless it's completely necessary. They know what they want and don't mind waiting. They prefer routine and predictability. They have a tendency to be lazy because of this reluctance to change to something. No killers mentioned have Mars in Taurus. Finally, there are two Leo Mars killers. Leo Mars wants to be praised for their actions, their energetic and and enthusiastic and can easily get fired up. They hold a lot of pride in what they do and will get offended if they perceive the other person is not giving them the recognition they believe they deserve. No killers mentioned in this video have Mars in Leo. What have we learned so far? Capricorn serial killers are usually good at approaching their victims. They're usually meticulous and dedicated to committing the perfect crime. Capricorn serial killers who are either the most infamous, the most prolific in either male or female categories, and the youngest born usually work in the medical field and are thought of as caring and responsible individuals, which makes it difficult to see them as a real threat, at least for some time. Stay tuned for more astrological profiling videos.